right. Big game here. We are uh, certainly excited for this opportunity. Um, really, you know, first off, want to tell our fans again how grateful we are for this past weekend. Thought the atmosphere was unbelievable uh, for the Michigan State game. You know, uh, a lot of things we were able to go back and kind of evaluate and thought our team played well in a lot of ways, but certainly some, some opportunities for us to clean up some things. But um, getting to play a great opponent this week, strong in all three phases. You know, as a team, when you watch them, you really don't see a weakness. Um, they're, really, they're really strong across the board, and this will be a great challenge for us, and I know our fans will be great uh, again this weekend. So that'll, that'll make that a fun atmosphere for us. So here on the left, second row, Eric. What are the challenges of preparing for an offense that's so versatile, has so many talented players, and, and has obviously been rolling so far? Yeah, I think it's you know similar to what what I've talked about um, you know with our team and what we hope that we can be is you know you can't take away uh, one thing knowing that you know something else is a strength as well, right? And that they don't they're not really limited in what their strengths are. They're able to run the ball really well. They're able to throw it well. Talent, talented at multiple positions, you know, quarterback can run the ball as well. So they, there's a lot of things that present threats and I uh, think you have to be sound in everything you come up with, um, you know, be uh, aware of any risks that you're going to be taking and when is that risk worth it or not um, and be able to, you know, play sound football. On the right, Zach. Oregon fans are very, you know, they know about Chip Kelly a lot. What have you seen from him at Ohio State and what he's been able to do with their offense? Well, I think he's always done a great job of utilizing his personnel, you know, moving guys around and allowing them to do things that they do really, really well. He always finds unique ways to run the ball. Uh, I think that's, you know, one thing that he probably doesn't get enough credit for is his ability to run the ball um, regardless of the situation. You know, and he's at UCLA last year, the number one rushing team in our conference, you know, uh, for a lot of reasons. And, and it's because of his ability to run the ball. But he does a great job utilizing personnel, keeping on your toes, changing the tempos. Um, creating unique formations that you've never seen on film before, so you always have to prepare for something you haven't, you know, really prepared for. Front left, James. As someone who's called the number one defense in the country, what makes their defense unique in that way, and how they've been able to uh, achieve the results they've gotten so far? Yeah, it starts with them, you know, limit. They, they limit explosive plays, right? They do a great job of keeping the ball in front of them. They play really physical in the front. You know, they're able to stop the run. Um, they're really sound and aggressive at times in coverage, but you know they pitch a lot of different looks at you as well. Um, but it starts they, they eliminate explosive plays. They play really sound football. They have good overlap in their defense. Um, they're able to change the picture up. Um, they have you know really good D linemen, good edges, uh, and then they're able to cover you know outside. So they create a lot of challenges there. Right, Bill Chris. I know this isn't the first time you faced Chip Kelly, but I'm curious if his success that he's had here, he had here in the past, if that still kind of resonates within the program at all. In what, in, in what way? What do you mean? Just like the, the success that he had, you know, 10, 15 years ago, does that still kind of, people still talk about that? Did you learn about that when you got here? Do you remember that era of Oregon football? Yeah, I remember the teams that he had here. You know, I think everybody respects him as a football coach and certainly the things that he was able to accomplish while he was here. Coach Ohio State has obviously two star wide receivers in Smith and Abuko. What do you see from them on film and what sort of challenges will those two kind of present to the Oregon secondary this weekend? Yeah, stop, go. You know, they can catch the ball and they can turn it into a big play right away. You know, it's not necessarily always averaged up the target. It's way down the field. It's their ability to catch it in space and get vertical. They block really, really well in the perimeter. Um, and those guys have big catch radiuses. So you see them win on balls that you would, con you would call 50-50 balls a lot of times. They win on contested, you know, c contested balls. So do a really good job there. Back left, Matt. I think in your career, you've coached in nine different top five matchups. Is there any common trait or you know thing you have to do in a game in those games that to, to win that's more heightened in this type of an atmosphere? Uh, I'd say winning football is winning football, but I think you always look when you're playing an opponent. You know what what's some commonalities in games that uh, they haven't had success in and that you've had success in, right? Where where are those places where you can find strengths? What are the pieces of the game that are going to matter the most? You know, obviously explosive plays and takeaways is always something that we focus on here, but, you know, rushing game, uh, I think that matters, you know, ability to win on critical downs in critical situations, red area, I think are, are all really important. Back left there. You and your players have just talked at, after every single opponent, just still about it being Oregon versus Oregon. How was that mindset? Do you feel like kind of prepared this team for this big moment this week? Yeah, I think just the constant growth, you know, the focus on what can we get better and if we attack the things that we need to improve on. Um, and that's been our focus all year. And, you know, throughout the season, I think you've seen us play better and better ball in certain situations uh, and attack things that we weren't as good at the week before. All right. Does having knowledge of Ohio State's running back coach give you any sort of advantage this week? 
I, I think that probably plays both ways. You know, like last week we played against coaches that have been here before. When we played UCLA, we played against coaches that have been here before. It makes you change your terminology. Like you're going to change the names of calls. Stuff before that might have been a run for us is maybe now a pass. Something that was going right is now maybe going left. Uh, but that's pretty easy for our players to do once you, you know, communicate that and change it. Um, certainly he knows some of the things that we like to do. Uh, on the same note, we, we certainly like, know some of the things that he likes to do. So, um, you know, Coach Locke did a great job for our program. He's doing a great job for theirs now. After Friday's game, Dylan talked about emphasizing protecting the ball in the red zone, that being a key. What what are some of the ways you, you do that in the week to try to get those situations kind of figured out? Yeah, you you, you play red red area football, right? You put it down there, uh, put the ball inside the 20, and you go, you know, communicate, what, what do we want that to look like? And if you expect to see it in the game, you got to see it in practice first. And, uh, you know, he knows he wants those plays back. You know, that's that's it doesn't take anybody you know, special to recognize that, that he wants that back. But it's about how can we coach that better and make sure that those situations are avoided. How much more confident are you, Tosh, the defensive staff as a whole, in the CB2 position this year compared to last year when obviously those Washington games where they were able to exploit some things there differently than perhaps this year, or at least you hope for this year? How much more confident in that that spot and the depth that you have there? I'm, I'm confident in our players. I like our team. I like the guys that we get the opportunity to go out there and play with. I think our guys play competitive ball. Um, and this will certainly be the best challenge for every single position on our, on our uh, team this week. I believe it's been back-to-back -back weeks now of no sacks allowed. What do you think has been the biggest difference in the O-line in, in the last few weeks that's made you feel confident in their play heading to this? Yeah, I think a lot of pieces add up to that. You know, timing scheme is part of that. Um, you know, how we've adjusted some of the things that we do, I think, is a big part of that. And then the, the communication between the offensive line and the quarterback has also been really important there. Back left, Matt. A lot of attention has been on Jeremiah Smith, but Emeka has been pretty darn good, too. What's just been your impressions of him and – challenging facing another receiver of that caliber when they have two of them yeah they got more than just two great wideouts they got several great wideouts in their program um certainly those two are very very special but you know whether it's tate i mean there's there's a bunch of them on their team that can go play winning football so that's what makes this a challenge you can't just say okay i'm going to focus on this one guy because there's other guys on the field that can beat you all right that you guys talk about blocking out outside noise. Last week, there was a lot of upsets, a lot of chaos in college football. Do you use that to your advantage to kind of hone in and to show your players why it's so important to have a single game focus? I think our players are really aware of that. Um, and our messaging doesn't change necessarily week to week. You know, that's been something that's been consistent for us through fall camp, um, that it's about the guys in our room and what we're able to focus on, not what everybody else is talking about. Back left, Aaron. The last time that Chip Kelly came to Eugene, it was college game day. UCLA came in as an unbeaten opponent, ranked high. Um, I know for you, and I think your profile picture, I think on social media is still that one of you going to the college game day set. Just what do you remember about uh, being there, being at college game day, and just your feeling of being on that set for the very first time? Yeah, I think more than anything that day, I, I remember our fans and how much of an impact I felt like they had on that game, how fun that environment was for our players to get to be a part of. You know, obviously you come to a place like Oregon to play in big time games and this is one of those opportunities, but to get to be a part of big time atmospheres as well. And certainly this is this is one of those. Jordan's been so consistent in the run game, but it seems like it's been hard at times to find maybe a second runner. What's, what's the key of getting Noah and, and Dylan more involved maybe this week? Yeah, just that consistency, you know, continue to find, you know, opportunities to be able to block up runs properly for those guys and give them opportunities to win, you know, on the second level. What do you see from Will Howard that's made him effective in raising his completion percentage uh, compared to a year ago? And, and what insight, if any, can Kobe Savage provide given that he practiced against him for a couple of years? You know, similar to the, these other teams that we've played that have had guys that have kind of crossed over, you know, I think. Again, they do a great job schematically of finding, you know, completions. If you loading up hats in the in, in the run game, there's going to be some guys that are open outside. They've done a good job of uh, throwing into open windows uh, and attacking that. Back right, Brett. Coach, this program's seen a lot of big games in its history at Austin Stadium. You've coached in a few of them yourselves. Do you feel like this matchup against Ohio State, top five, top three matchup, maybe the biggest that this program has ever seen in its history? I certainly can't speak to the entire history of Oregon. I think this is a really big game. I think it's a great opportunity for two great teams to get to play against each other. Uh, again, I think that's why you come to a place like this. But I think this will be an awesome atmosphere for our fans and certainly our players. All right, Zach. Going back to Michigan State, did you ever get an explanation for why that hit on Dylan was not a late hit or a rep in the passer? We sent it in. I haven't got a response yet on, on why it, it wasn't one. I was told that uh, the guy watching it said that it wasn't. So we sent it in. We'll see what it, what it looks like. 
What's Jurion done to, to kind of get a bit of a role? Looks like he got in there for the first time this last game. Kind of what's what's been going on behind the scenes that we may have missed? Yeah, just being, you know, part of it starts with him being healthy. You know, he's uh, been, been dinged up at times, but he's practicing really hard. Um, he's working his tail off to be on the field for us, whether that's in special teams and a role at wide out, um, and it's created some opportunities for him. What makes their running back duo unique and, and what's kind of the, the biggest asset that each one of those guys has in terms of how they go about running? Because stylistically, I think they're a little bit different than each other. Yeah, maybe a little different, but I'm, I'm the same you know, token. There are guys that have good size and speed and uh, they don't go down on first contact. You know, They're really good at using their weapons. As far as at the second level, they do a good job with stiff arms, um, that, but they rarely, rarely go down on, on uh, first contact and they have really good vision and they're patient until that opportunity window uh, opens up, but when they see a hole, they hit it and they hit it with great speed. Last question, James. Will's done really well at putting safeties in conflict to create some of those big plays that you guys have hit offensively. You touched on it that OSU has just really basically given up nothing of 30 plus yards. How have they been able to avoid that when that's been a strength of yours in particular? How have they been able to avoid it so far in these five games? Yeah, I think that that's a piece. They have a they do a good job defensively of not you know creating conflict, of avoiding conflict, and their guys do a good job of farming their own land, not worrying about what somebody else is doing, but doing their job and being sound in their job. There's times where those safeties are high and they're they're responsible for the deep part of the field, and they let the you know the corners fit the run. There's times when they're guys that are responsible for the run fit, and then those corners do a great job of covering downfield. So they do a good job of changing that up and guys doing their job. Thank you, coach. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Your time.